Hi, Freaksters here. Uh, today I will be showing in a War Thunder video the Rank 2 A6M2 Variant N. This plane is a turn fighter, meaning that most of the time you will be looking for fighters that come to you rather than you chasing them. Because of the lack of armor for this plane in general, you don't want to do head-ons because it also has the disadvantage of not being flexible on land. So if you get shot at and have to land, it's pretty tricky to land on non-sea bases. However, this plane does get air spawns when you spawn in, which can allow for diving ambushes over time. Which I find kind of humorous because there's not many points that are fighter based at this tier that get air spawns outside of uh, slow climbing interceptors. And then next, I'll talk about the guns. The plane's guns are decent to okay ish depending on how you view it. Most of the hitting power is going to come from your 20mm machine guns, which is the Type 99 version 1, or I call it, it's really called Model 1. They don't have a lot of ammunition, so you got to make your shots count. And once you research the offensive 20mm belts, I usually prefer the tracer round, which is a high explosive fragmentation tracer cell, because it's much easier to get holes in the wings when you have high explosive rounds hitting a plane versus having armor piercing. Although Universal is, a, I think, a second valid choice if you prefer a little more flexibility. Can't go wrong with either one. I would not recommend ground targets because it's not a ground attack plane. And stealth is only if uh, you're really familiar with the velocities of these 20s because outside of like 500 meters or 0.5 kilometers, they really tend to struggle because of the wonky ballistics of these early versions of the 20s. The 7mm machine guns are pretty much mediocre. They have okay velocity but they have awful pen and are usually only relied upon for pilot sniping or ranging shots. But I tend to fire all the guns at once. But um, it it's they're just there. I mean you can use them but they're not great. They're okay. <laughs> I'd prefer to use Universal for the 7.7mm. At least to get via a lot of ammunition though, 1360 in particular. And with that, I will be doing some crew skill suggestions. So when you do the Zero Line or Japanese Fighters in particular, when you're playing Air Realistic Battle Mode, I generally prefer in order of this is G Tolerance, which allows you to pull more Gs and stamina which allows you to maintain your G's when using mouse aim because if you don't prioritize these you'll black out and you won't be able to fire and hit planes while maneuvering like a madman because that's what these planes are good at is maneuverability in the horizontal. Vertical it's depending on the variant and situation. So vitality is what I would mix in between. Awareness and key vision should be Lower priority in Air RB, I mean it does help, but they're not as priority as the first two, three I mentioned. Uh, for logistical services, I would recommend focusing on weapon maintenance and reload speed for when, if you make it back to base. Repair speed in between and the rank, is which is really expensive uh, crew point wise, but you do need that for faster repair times in the future. Since this is at rank 2, it will go at maximum efficiency. If you play a plane that has a higher rank than your repair rank, the reload and rearm speeds are much lower when you make it back to base. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to take this into an aeroistic match and do some commentary on it. it didn't take very long. Um, since this plane's a roof plane, or they call it the roof and it's a float plane, you get an air spawn, which is kind of hilarious. I would not do an airfield spawn because it, I don't think it would take off at all. Minimal field load, you do not need anything more than that for this plane. And gun targeting distance, I prefer between 4 to 500 
For the demonstrations of this match, I'm going to start with 400 for the gun targeting distance with no vertical targeting. I know hit to battle. So this point is faded, which most of the zeros I have in the game or have access to in the game. So it's at basically what the best it can be performance wise. Let's see what we're at here. And also, if you're wondering how I'm getting these views, with the default key binding, I believe it's V key for the keyboard. Because if I have the mouse and keyboard. To about there, just average that there and maybe reduce my climb just a little bit to 10 degrees. Get some more speed. So I can climb a little faster. The zeros in particular don't overheat very quickly, especially if the radiator upgrade. So you can run web for quite a while. And you don't have to worry about the engine like go into danger zone. My target altitude is going to be maybe 2,500 to 3,000 meters. I generally use meters for altitude, kilometers for distance, and miles per hour for speed. That's just my preferences. You can change that to whatever you want in this game. It's just the way it is. <laughs> so. What else we got here? Let's see what the team composition is. So America and Japan versus Germany, Russia, Britain, and Sweden. Yeah, it the realistic battle thing is a kind of a misnomer nation-wise. They kind of changed how that worked for years now. But right now, I'm just looking for fighters in, in particular because... Um, there's just not much there. Um, I haven't spotted anybody of interest. But I am also using my zoom in function to see if there's any planes worth going after in particular. Yak-1s can be quite deadly at that altitude. Right now I'm at 3000 meters and still climbing. So let me see if I can climb a little higher. Or a little harder. Let's go to 15 again. Now that we've built up some more speed. So this plane doesn't do well in high speed diving, but if you get altitude to dive on a plane, regardless of the nation, that's usually what you want to try to achieve. Or, in this case, you want to at least be high enough so that way they're not gaining too much speed and you can't turn into them. So I'm going to get off of wet and go back to 10 degree climb. Looks like they're targeting, oh, the Corsair, and the Corsair just went down. Hmm. I mean, I do want to dogfight those planes, but I don't want to go in just yet. I'm going to reduce my climb a little bit, go to like almost level, just to get some more speed. And the other thing with the Zeros is they have a low top speed, especially in the early variants, so you're not very good at chasing planes. You're good at turning planes, but chasing them is kind of tricky. <laughs> That's why you want to usually climb if you can. And here's just to demonstrate a little bit of the agility with and without combat flaps. They will be using those quite uh, geniusly. Combat flaps really do help these planes a lot. They do add more drag over time, so be careful when to deploy them. But sometimes I actually don't even deploy them because it's, that's how agile these planes are. And sometimes I forget to when I really should. <laughs> They're just so easy to turn that you forget these things. So right now I'm at 4,300 meters. There are planes below me, but I can't really do anything about that plane. And I don't want to lose all my altitude. I don't. I may be aggressive, but I'm not going to dive on something I know I can't catch. Those planes will outrun me easily. So I'm going to go towards our B-34 that looks like he's in trouble and start weapon. I just find it kind of hilarious, though, that this plane is rarely seen. It's probably for a good reason, because of how slow it is. Because I'm, I'm literally just flooring it right now, and I'm barely going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of... There's two bombers. I can't really intercept those at this plane. It's not really ideal for it, because if you uh, go after them, in this plane, it gets ripped to shreds very quickly by bomber gunners. You don't also have the speed 
to dive away very quickly. Um, unlike other nations like, say, US and Germany. They can definitely take those on, depending on the plane, but not this one. This is not really a good bomber hunter. Oh, there's a Corsair down there. The P-40's diving on a Yak-1. I'm gonna go into that brawl. I'm gonna see if maybe I can catch this Corsair. Doesn't look like he's paying attention, and I'm looking around with the C key just to make sure he's not uh, doing anything unusual there. So let's see. Oh, oh, oh okay. That was unexpected. I can still fly though. That's not a huge issue. But this is what I mean by how quickly you can die in this point, so. Oh god, I did not want to force a head on there. I start pulling in. Alright, now I can turn in on this guy. Just do a little bit of single tapping. I made a big mistake trying to think I can do that. Ah, oh, shoot, I lost control. Yeah, this is what I mean. You can lose control very easily. Come on, just a little more. My aim is not always the greatest. Come on. Come on, just a little more. Just a little more, come on. I'm trying to get him. Just a little more. Yeah, I can't fire now. Yeah, I almost used up all my cannon ammunition. Hit all these hits, but no damage. Oh my god. Well, you know how it is with teams these days. Now in like a very bad situation, and there's not much I can do about it. I mean, it did damage the Spitfire, so that did help. And I have a fuel leak. How far am I to base? Yeah, I have to go back to base. Oh, yep. Nothing I can do there. Oh, that helped. Actually, uh, got a little more agility out of that. Thank you for reducing the weight, though. God, how's this plane still flying is beyond me, but I'll do it. Come on. I want to fire my machine gun. Come on. Ah. Ah, I got a Nice. Oh my god. Fire. Oh my god. How am I still alive? Is this play made out of Doranium or something? I mean, jeez. I thought it would be dead by now. Like, seriously. Well, well, I'm on fire. Alright. Well, let's see if I can get one more shot off here. Come on. Nope. Not gonna get it. That is just a very brief first match in the A6M2N as a prototype video. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll be covering more zeros if this uh, gains traction and stuff, in particular the zero path, which eventually leads to the Phantom. So the next up will be the N1K1 Koifu. This is Rickster's Journey, signing off.